various members. Yes. Good morning, gang. Good morning, good morning. Well, good morning, everyone. I am so excited to uh, be able to start the meeting this morning. And it is being recorded and we will be blasting this out to you later on. So all the slides that are going on up, you'll have access to these and you can freeze the different uh, video at the video at different times. So um, I just wanted to say how proud I am for all of you to be able to plug in on a regular basis and on a weekly basis every Wednesday at 10 a.m. I am Bobby Spiegel. I'm the president and CEO for the Corona Chamber of Commerce. And it is my indeed pleasure to uh, welcome all of you to this call. Our call today is like we're, we're putting 10 pounds of potatoes in a five pound bag. So there's lots of things. Each of our invited speakers have a limited amount of time to share. And what we're most wanting to have done is for everyone to stay focused and on task with things. However, um, before I start with the chat and stuff, I want to talk about our sponsorship and uh, Lucas Oil. You'll see the slide is up there right now. And what's beautiful about Lucas Oil is that they're just a gr great hometown company that's very involved and immersed in our community in many nonprofits, in many large organizations. And Lucas really sets the standard for being involved and supportive of so many different organizations. We so appreciate their sponsorship. If by chance you are interested in sponsoring, uh, please let me know. We'd be glad to talk to you about that. As far as today's call and the different speakers that we have, if you would use the chat box and to the speakers that may not be aware, don't worry about what's in the chat box. Linda Richards with our chamber will actually ask the questions. During each segment as each one is introduced and they're talking, at the end, our chairman of the board, Don Williamson, who is serving as our MC today, will actually ask Linda for any questions and then she will ask those questions and then uh, you will be able to answer those questions. And with that, we just hope that you will do that. And I do ask that all of you mute yourself so that if there's any interruptions, uh, that we don't have those uh, challenges with the um, various background noises. At this time, it gives me a great deal of pleasure to introduce a, a very dear friend of mine. Don Williamson and I have been friends for since junior high. And um, this year, his theme of make history, we had no clue what kind of history was going to be made when we started that out. So um, it, it's definitely a different type of year, but I couldn't think of anyone more capable of handling what's going on than Don Williamson. Ladies and gentlemen, our chairman of the board, Don Williamson. Thank you very much, uh, as always, Bobby, for the kind words. I really appreciate it. And uh, welcome, everyone, to this week's call. And again, I want to echo Bobby and thank you for being here today. Uh, we have a great uh, list of speakers, and that's what makes our calls uh, a really valuable use of everyone's time. We, we uh, get people who are in the know, who are part of uh, the leadership of what's going on today, and we get, I cannot thank them enough. We have a, we have a incredible lineup today, of course, uh, headed by uh, uh, State Senator Roth. I mean, you know, how wonderful it is for him to take time out of his busy schedule to join us here today. And uh, I just want to, uh, from the outset, thank him uh, for, for, for being here. 
Um, as, as we say every week, uh, one of our uh, main uh, objectives here at the Crown Chamber of Commerce is advocacy for business at every level of government and agency of the government. And as part of that, we have uh, a, a group at uh, the Legislative Action Committee that that is what they function as to keep uh, our chamber informed and to make sure that uh, what we consider uh, good for our chamber and our local business community is uh, put on the table and made aware. And we and uh, our chairman of our advocacy outreach is a member of our board of uh, the Corona Chamber of Commerce. And that is Anthony Edwards from Robertson's Ready Mix. And uh, at this time, I would like to turn it over to Anthony for a segment on our legislative action committee efforts. Anthony? Thank you so much. Uh, can everyone hear me well? Yes, you're fine. Thank you. Fantastic. Uh, I want to you know, thank everyone for uh, jumping on the call. I think the, the call is a great way to get everyone involved without having to, you know, include the, the travel time. And I think getting as many people involved as possible is, is the best way to move forward. And I really appreciate, uh, you know, uh, the Senator for jumping on with us. That's uh, an incredible treat uh, that we don't normally get. So that's, that's awesome. Uh, today, I want to introduce uh, Jeff Gibson from Occidental Communications. He's our advocacy and uh, legislative advisor. Uh, so if you have any questions in regards to any sort of legislative matters and how bills affect, you know, businesses and small businesses alike, um, you know, definitely reach out to the chamber and or myself or Jeff and, you know, we'll definitely try to reach uh, an answer for you. Uh, Jeff's going to be today giving us an update on I think three different legislative bills that are, you know, coming down the pipeline. So, you know, stay in tune for that. So, uh, Jeff, if you are on, I will kick this off to yourself. Sure. Great. Thank you, Anthony. I appreciate that. Uh, every week we've come to you with a, a short legislative update. Today we're going to have a, a little bit more to uh, take advantage of the senator being here as well. And the, the two bills that uh, we are uh, bringing to you are both opposed positions. They've been ranked as as uh, job killers by by the California Chamber, and uh, these are areas that we've worked with, worked in uh, very strongly in the past with uh, members of our uh, state legislative uh, delegation going back years. And the first is AB 196 by Assemblywoman uh, Gonzalez from uh, San Diego. Both of these bills are are from uh, the assembly member down in San Diego. She's the head of the labor committee. Uh, the first creates an indisputable claim that an essential employee, and, and that's a that's a that's an employee at an essential business, a grocery store, or any of the businesses that have remained open during the emergency. If one of those employees unfortunately comes down uh, with uh, C19 in any uh, in any aspect of their life, they can create an, an indisputable claim that the uh, that it was as a result of their employment uh, and uh, have a workers' compensation claim. Now, there are a number of people that have caught uh, the disease, unfortunately, uh, uh, caught the virus, unfortunately, at their place of, of work. We've seen that. Uh, we, we know that to be the case. Uh, this would actually create a blanket indisputable claim that if any employee at a business that has remained open uh, uh, comes down with the virus, uh, that they could file a workers' compensation claim. As, as, as the legislature is going through the process of determining uh, responsibility and financial issues uh, around the emergency, uh, we feel that obviously this is going to be a, a very large hit on the workers' compensation system uh, and on uh, employers directly. So. Uh, we urge and, urge and oppose and would be happy to um, get the uh, the consent of everyone on the, the call. So Don, Any, we, we need to go ahead and have a motion. Yep. Yeah. So. Okay, uh, we're uh, looking for a motion uh, for the consent of everyone on the call as Jeff just explained. So uh, if you are in favor of our Taking that position, please indicate so position, yeah. with an with a I. We haven't done this here before, so uh, yeah, uh, sure. everyone's I, muted. I, I that's apologize. Fine. That's fine. 
I apologize, Don. We did it last week. We we took care of some uh, some legislative business while you were out, so we changed the rules on you. My apologies. So at this time, if all of you can unmute yourself. Aye. Okay. Aye. And uh, aye. So aye. Is there, aye. Thank you. Thank you. Aye. Is there anyone? Aye. Is there anyone that opposes? Our position. That opposes our in favor of opposing. So. Nope. Okay. Nope. So okay. it does carry. Thank you, Jeff. Is there okay. anything Thank else you. that you've got? Sure. And, and as, as a background, what we do, what we will be doing is we, we will be sending this advice on to the executive board and, and then communicating that out to our legislators. Uh, AB 3075, also by Lorena Gonzalez, uh, Democrat from San Diego, uh, would allow regions to set up essentially a wage and work rule uh, standards boards uh, that could exceed uh, state minimum wage and other regulatory uh, actions. Now, we have consistently as a chamber encouraged the state to leave this, leave these issues to employers and employees uh, within the current regulatory scheme. And so this is gonna create regional issues if you have uh, any sort of agent, if you have any sort of your, any part of your business that is outside the region, this ends up becoming a, uh, will end up becoming a major problem because now what you pay your employees in one part of the state is going to have to be different uh, than another part of the state and it's going to be out of your hands. And so that's, the, that's a major concern of, of, uh, of ours and, and, uh, the, and we agree with Cal Chamber that it's a job killer. So looking for um, uh, a, a, another, uh, I would say, uh, consent advice. So uh, all those in favor of us opposing this uh, and advising the executive committee to oppose this, please signify by saying aye. So again, all of you, if you could unmute yourself. Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, great. Okay, with that, we got it. We will advise the executive committee appropriately, and uh, we appreciate it. So the uh, and not to step on the senator's remarks too too uh, too much, but the legislature is currently um, in recess. His work continues on as uh, as one of the leaders on the budget, uh, but the assembly has decided that it will likely be out longer than the announced July 13th return date uh, because of an outbreak of COVID-19 uh, amongst the uh, staff and uh, one of the members uh, has concern that she may have caught, uh, caught the virus on the floor of the assembly uh, via someone's mask. So uh, while they're sorting that out, it's very likely that, that they will uh, extend the uh, uh, summer recess so that it, it uh, probably will extend until July 27th was what we were hearing yesterday. That's not official. That's something that uh, was bandied about yesterday. Currently, the, it was scheduled to, to come back on uh, uh, early next week. Uh, so because the, the state lost several, several weeks during the emergency. So uh, we will be tracking that and I'm sure the Senator is much more um, is, is a much more appropriate person to comment on that than me. So in any case, with that, we're wrapped up and back to you guys. Thank you very much, Jeff. Uh, Linda, do we have any questions in the, in the uh, queue for uh, Jeff? No questions. Okay, great. Jeff, thank you very much. We appreciate your input today and uh, the time that you gave us. Uh, with that, we will move on to our next guest. It is my pleasure to introduce today our city manager here from the city of Corona who has uh, someone to introduce to the Chamber of Commerce today. So I would like to turn it over to uh, Jacob Ellis. Thank you, Don. It's really nice to be with you guys this morning. Um, it is my pleasure to be able to introduce Jessica Gonzalez, who is our brand new Economic Development Director for the City of Corona. Um, Jessica's in her second week with the city. Uh, we're really excited to have Jessica join the team and, and I'm looking forward to having someone of her caliber and talent uh, working on behalf of Corona residents and businesses. 
Um, I'm going to turn this over to Jessica now to give her a chance just to tell us and tell all of you a little bit more about herself and a little bit of her background. Thank you, Jacob. And are you all able to hear me? Yes. Excellent. Yes. Perfect. Well, thank you, Bobby and the Corona Chamber for inviting me this morning to share a few words and really participate with your group. As Jacob mentioned, this is my second week here in the great city of Corona, and I'm very pleased to have joined a community, I can tell you, where ultimately I can see that we value the collaboration with our business leaders being our chamber. Prior to joining Corona, I worked for the cities of Anaheim and Lake Forest um, and also Santa Ana. And in this regard, I was spearheading um, business attraction, development, and of course now business recovery and resiliency efforts. So I can tell you that in the 15 years that I've spent in economic development, revitalization, I have always valued the partnership with the business community and specifically working hand in hand with our Chamber of Commerce. So you are the business leaders that are advocating for small business, for industry, for economic growth. And I am eager to be working with Bobby and the team here to make sure that we're bringing forward some new efforts, some programs to re-energize -ener our businesses, to ensure that they are confidently moving onward and upward as we are recovering and as we are thriving. So I know there will be more to come in terms of the partnership here, but I want to thank you and let you know that I'm excited to have joined such a wonderful organization. Jessica, I just wanted to say welcome again, and you and I have had some side conversations, but I wanted everyone to remember last week when Rob Moran, who's with the County of Riverside, heard that you were joining the team here in Corona. He was elated and had very positive comments about being able to work together with you. You could both serve on a uh, statewide board, and I know that you are on many different boards, which will be a plus for our business community and for our city. So welcome on behalf of the business community. We're looking for great things to do together. Thank you, Bobby. Absolutely. And on that note, yes, there are so many partnerships out there that I'm pleased and honored to be part of. And I'm looking forward to leveraging those partnerships, those tools, that information to make sure that we are positioning Corona in the best way possible to attract businesses, to ensure that they are investing, they're contributing to our local workforce, and that we are uh, being a partner and supporting them. So thank you, Bobby. Thank you. Donnie, back to you. Okay, great. Uh, and I, I too, Jesse, I would like to welcome you here. Look forward to meeting you and spending some time with you at some point. And uh, uh, know that uh, you'll be a good addition to uh, the Circle City. Uh, do we have any questions for either uh, Jessica or uh, for Mr. Ellis, Linda? No questions at this time. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Jacob and Jessica for being here this morning. Thank you. And, and again, welcome uh, to Jessica. Uh, now we're going to turn our time over to uh, our Riverside County Supervisor, Karen Spiegel, who's had a very busy week and there's been a lot of developments. So at this time, I'd like to turn over to Karen. Lots of developments, even though we're all kind of a little bit slower paced, so they say. These Zoom calls, I don't know if you're finding, are very draining also. Um, we're still working. Don't forget that. We've got business that has to continue on even amidst a pandemic, so we cannot forget that. But business will not continue to work and will not get back to normal or a new normal, whatever you want to call it, unless we take heed to the recommendations by the state and the Riverside County, if you remember right, when we rescinded our orders to be in line with the state, that means we are in line with the state. And I have to continually remind everybody, we never said not to wear masks. We are 100% behind our governor's mandate of wearing masks. Because as you can tell, we have had such a surge, and in two or three weeks following the July 4th weekend, we are anticipating even a greater surge. We have to remind you, and I hope you take this to your friends, your family, your business folks, we need to adhere to wearing masks. I know some of you are strongly opposed, but we're seeing a rise, a uh, severe rise, and it will only get worse if we do not do the social, and it's really physical distancing of six feet, washing of our hands regularly, and again, of the face masks. Sometimes there are pain, I realize it, um, there are times and places, if you're running, you don't need to wear the mask, but carry it with you in case you get close to people. It is not just for your safety, but it's also for those around you. We really want to make sure we don't spread this. 
Um, if you have any information on anything with COVID, um, the, the email address would, or the uh, website is rivco, R-I-V-C-O-P-H dot org. When I'm done, I'll put all these websites on there. All your answers, every press release, all the information, it's very comprehensive. Please, if you've got questions, call us, go on the website, because we want all of us to be successful, and we can't be successful if we don't work together. Um, in the meantime, you may come across a contact tracer. Some of you feel a conspiracy on this. It's not. The sole purpose is to reduce the spread. If you have been tested positive, we're tracing back to the people you could have come in contact with for A, to find out where you picked it up, and B, so we can kind of help those that may have been around. We don't use your name. Um, unless of course you want to give permission. It's very, very private. The information is not given to anybody else. And that's important for you to understand. So I do want to continue to, to say, please work with the contact tracers. It's for your family, it's for you, it's for everybody to, to help get this disease under control. But that being said, before I move on to some of the grants, I just want to mention about in the middle of all this, we are finalizing the census. Understand the census is a very, very serious project happens every 10 years and a lot of our funding occurs with this census and it's very important for us to participate because we'll get less money um, through various programs for all the things for 10 years that number stands for 10 years so you, when you wonder why when you go down the freeway there's a number on the sign of the population of the city it's there for 10 years so if we want to get it more accurate you have to participate so real quick on three grants I want to focus on, obviously for the, um, this group, the Small Business Assistance Grant Program. I know Rob Moran has talked about it. We took your voices and we are coming back out. This time we're including sole proprietors that don't have employees. There are many small businesses that it may just be a mom and pop shop. And those are the bread and butter of our economy. Those of you who don't recognize that, that is 85% of our businesses here. We also have um, businesses that have received some of the SBA Economic Injury Disaster Loan or Advance may be able to participate again, or will be. So we're trying to make some changes on the second round so that we can um, reach out and benefit many more of our businesses. That is also, I'll have that in the bo chat box on that email address. The amounts run through um, up to $10,000 and it will go until August 31st at 5 p.m. or until the funds are exhausted. The next one is, I um, wanted to make sure everybody was aware the nonprofit grants opened on July 1st. That's something, those of you who know me, I'm passionate about nonprofits. They fill some of the gaps in our economy and our government, unable to meet some of the needs of our community. Those grants are 2,500 up to 10,000. 501c3s and 501c6s. And um, that is being run by our Inland Empire Community Foundation. They're overseeing it and the whole process goes through them. And I will put that website also in the chat box. Then the third one is rental assistance help. It's called Un uh, United Lift. And this is a rental assistance program that's coordinated between Riverside County, United Way of the Inland Valleys and Lift to Rise. And the goal is of keeping about 10,000 families and residents in their houses. And so this is a special program. We've set aside about $33 million of rent assistance of COVID dollars for the months of June through November. And um, the uh, United Way of Inland Valleys will be administering the program. And the first round will be um, dispersed this month. So if you know of anybody or yourself is included, we know that people have lost their jobs and don't have the monies that they used to have. So we're hoping that this will help in um, getting us through some of the tough times. If you have any questions, feel free to ask, call me. Most of you know how to get a hold of me. And um, with that, I just put them in the box for some of these um, email addresses or websites. And thank you very much. Thank you, Karen. Uh, Supervisor, are we uh, have Mr. Moran here today? No, he's not. That's why I covered some of the business grants. Great. Okay. 
thank you so much. Thank you for the good work you do on our behalf. We uh, appreciate the information you uh, consistently participate here every week and, and just want to thank you very much. Uh, Linda, do we have any questions for Supervisor Spiegel? I had one question about whether we're going to be opening more testing sites with the surge of demand for testing. Um, we are trying to open more, but the, we still have uh, uh, dates open. I know there was a problem with the website. We're trying to get a new flyer up that should be up today. I'm hoping with all the test sites we have, we have a whole set of state testing sites as well as county testing sites. So there are two different phone numbers. Please go on the website. You'll find that. Um, so we already have, I think, 16 test sites up. We do do um, some sites that we go to various places for high demand, if they're off the beaten track, we can uh, congregate several um, testing at one time. So if you have any questions on the testing or couldn't find, uh, please just give me a call or, or email me. Thank you. Linda, anything else? No additional questions. Okay. Again, thank you, thank you, Supervisor Spiegel, and uh, we really appreciate uh, your being being here today with us. Uh, uh, I'd like to turn our attention now to uh, our Executive Leadership Roundtable Program that we have here at the Corona Chamber of Commerce. It's one of our signature uh, projects that we uh, put on on an annual basis, and a member of this year's uh, class is uh, Mark Edwards from Empire Energy Solutions, and I would like to turn the time over to my friend Mark Edwards. Mark. All right, thank you so much, Don. I appreciate it. Uh, first off, I'd like to uh, compliment uh, Bobby and Linda for putting on a, a great program for us. And I believe the 2020 program is the best ever. I think I heard that a couple times. Um, but, uh, you know, who, who's counting? Uh, just a couple personal highlights um, uh, of the program. Uh, March Air Reserve Base uh, was just uh, incredible. Uh, the unmanned aircraft, uh, fighter jets getting up uh, close and personal there, uh, Homeland Defense. NAVC and uh, Norco, uh, just visiting those um, uh, facilities was just uh, outstanding. And then the exposure to uh, companies like AFE, uh, and these are uh, national companies, uh, VegFresh, Bender, uh, and of course our own uh, Don Williamson. I I'm a uh, historian by heart as well, and uh, that was actually one of my uh, favorite days. And if you think you know uh, Corona, think again. Uh, until you uh, are able to spend a day with him, then uh, you, you'll realize exactly uh, uh, how uninformed you are about uh, what goes on in Corona. So, um, and ELR is a, a great pr program where we forged uh, some friendships, uh, uh, business contacts that uh, I think are going to last uh, a lifetime. Uh, so, uh, getting on to what it is that this year's uh, uh, 2020 team uh, decided to take, a, take upon ourselves uh, uh, was uh, more than just a PB&J. And I know you've uh, heard that uh, before. And um, uh, it was born out of uh, us visiting that uh, uh, site uh, out at uh, March Air Force Base. And uh, back in 1941, uh, we had about 30,000 troops going through uh, March Air Force Base at the time. And uh, the, the troops would be there anywhere from three days uh, you know, or more. Uh, to deploy and then uh, to come back and hopefully uh, they're able to come back uh, safely. Uh, so here we are in uh, 2020 and as we uh, went through that facility, uh, we, we saw that there was a need for a major kitchen expansion. Uh, the uh, PB&J was a, a nice taste of home, uh, but we wanted to offer them a little bit more uh, for them putting their lives on the line and actually being deployed out of uh, that uh, facility. Uh, so a couple of things that uh, we have um, uh, embarked upon in order to uh, do over there is uh, overall kitchen expansion. Uh, so refrigeration uh, so that they can actually store perishables and uh, ultimately uh, provide food, hot food options uh, for the troops that are there. Uh, Wi-Fi installation as well. Um, it, it just seems uh, kind of crazy that in 2020 we don't uh, already have that there. So uh, we are uh, installing a Wi-Fi uh, for the troops that go through there. Uh, upgraded office space. And uh, one of the uh, heartwarming things that uh, we're doing is uh, we're allowing the troops to uh, record book readings uh, so that their children and their families can actually hear their voice while they're uh, deployed. Uh, any, uh, anywhere from uh, three months up to a year, they could be gone. Uh, so uh, that's a, a nice touch that uh, we're, we're looking to, uh, you know, afford those uh, service members that uh, go in and out of uh, March Air Reserve Base. Uh, so our program is actually coming to an end uh, here in the next month, uh, but the uh, charge still moves forward in order to continue to uh, raise money uh, for this program. 
Uh, we've uh, raised uh, at this point uh, a little, uh, I think a little short, a little over fifty thousand uh, dollars, which is uh, a huge accomplishment. And uh, but there's still work to be done. And uh, so uh, we're going to be looking uh, to do some other programs here in uh, the uh, the coming months. Uh, potentially a barbecue with uh, Chef James here in um, uh, the local area, and I think Bobby's working on a few other things. Uh, so you can go to uh, givebigcorona.com uh, to donate. Um, uh, any amount uh, would, would help. And uh, of course, uh, the bigger the better, uh, so that we can uh, do as much as we can for those troops out at um, uh, deploying uh, in and out of March Air Force Base. Uh, so I appreciate uh, your help with this project. Uh, we want to continue to make this big, and as I mentioned, this will go on uh, throughout uh, the balance of the year to uh, continue to raise money uh, for these individuals. I uh, appreciate uh, your attention, and uh, give big. Thank you very much, Mark, for that uh, recap and the plug for the ELR program. And I want to I want to build on uh, what Mark said about the ELR program. We're taking applications right now for the next class. As Mark said, this one is winding down, and their project is going to continue. Uh, but uh, it's uh, next year they'll have a new project again, but this one will continue like like Mark said. But uh, as, as he said, the ELR class is really a, a great learning experience where you can get really involved with what's going on here in our, not only here locally, but in our region and just about every facet. So uh, I encourage you to contact the Chamber of Commerce uh, office or myself or Bobby uh, if you're interested in next year's ELR class. Thank you again, Mark. Thank you. Uh, as you know, I'm chairman this year, and this is perhaps the coolest thing that I've gotten to do, is I get to introduce Senator Richard Roth. This, uh, he is, I met, I met Senator Roth uh, at his birthday party soon after he was elected, uh, held at the March, uh, Muse March Air Force Base Museum. And uh, it was really cool. And, and ever since I first met him, he has just been involved with our community. He's not one of these guys that's a long distance uh, representative. He's here. He's always uh, responded to our chamber. He's come to our events. He is just uh, really an impressive uh, representative uh, in the state senator for our region. I want to give you an example. Uh, recently, I think it was last week, there was a state bill 1383, which was proposing a mandatory 12 week, le week leave of absence for employers that they had to give their employees, which was really a job killer for some of the small businesses uh, that we represent here. And, uh, Profile and Courage, State Senator Roth uh, did vote against that job killing bill and uh, just want to thank him for that. And again, uh, it is an honor for me and a privilege to introduce uh, Senator Richard Roth. Senator? Go ahead, Senator. I'm having some internet problems, so hopefully. You froze up right now. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Go ahead. ahead. Okay. If at any point I break up, let me know and I can switch to the phone. I've, I guess I've got about 10 minutes, so I'll let me swing through this pretty quickly and then uh, maybe there'll be some questions. You know, what a difference a few months makes in January. Um, yeah, switch to the phone if you could, give you a little budget. Uh, Pardon me? If you could switch to your phone, that would probably be the best thing right now. Okay, hang on. Is that possible? Thank you. Senator, can you hear us? I can hear you fine. I've just got to get this meeting ID stuff down. Do you want me to uh, keep talking? You know what? Try it now with just with what you've got with the the uh, video that as you're on. Okay. My apologies, sir. No, it's something's going wrong. Anyway, two hundred twenty-two point two billion dollars. We were projecting the governor was a surplus of five point six billion, and that was going to increase by about another 1.35 billion based on the uh, revenue coming in the first week of March. And then of course, COVID-19 hit and we shut down before we did. did so. We authorized the governor to spend about a billion dollars in response and he proceeded to do that rather quickly. 
and we were off essentially for, I don't know, two, two, two and a half months, returned about mid-May um, to completely different procedures in Sacramento and a dramatically adjusted uh, May revision to the budget. As to the process and the procedures, uh, you may have heard the Capitol essentially is closed except for uh, those members of the public who have to attend essential public hearings. Lobbyists were not essentially allowed in the Capitol. There were no in-office meetings. Uh, legislators did not meet, specifically in the Senate. Our meetings, to the extent we had them, were telephonic. Occasionally, we'd do a Zoom conference. And then when we had hearings, they were markedly different. We were restricted to, on the Senate side, two hearings a day, one in the morning, one in the afternoon. And as you know, when you were up there, many times there were multiple hearings going on at the same time. Public participation was essentially reduced to the telephone. Um, I planned, you know, I'd chair budget sub one for education and I planned about eight hearings on the May revision. Uh, I was restricted to one hearing to do the education budget and that's 40% of California state budget. As to bills, we were told to reduce them. In January, there were about 2,200 bills. Uh, by the time the Senate and the Assembly cut the bill load, uh, there were probably about 600 bills left, most of them on the Assembly side. Uh, the problem with the reduced number of hearings is there limited amount of time to discuss, one, the budget, but two, policy. And Don mentioned one in particular, the family leave bill was a perfect example. That was floated by the governor in the budget uh, as a trailer bill. In terms of the budget, instead of a $5.6 billion surplus, the governor was projecting a $54.3 billion deficit. And he put his May revision out and designed, designed it to close that deficit to the extent possible with about $14 billion in cuts. And just to give you an idea of what the governor was gonna cut, 8.1 billion in cuts to K through 14, 8.1 billion. After school education and safety program cuts, school care reimbursement cuts, cuts to CSU and UC, and on and on and on, including significant cuts to health care providers and the elimination of the Song Brown medical residency money, which we fought for year after year, and which is helping to uh, fix our medically underserved situation in Riverside County. Well, that, none of that was acceptable to us, so we designed a budget that pretty much eliminated uh, those cuts, relied a little bit more on on our reserve accounts. And then of course, because the governor is the third leg in the stool, we had to negotiate with the governor on the budget. Uh, the finally negotiated budget is not bad. We were able to preserve the funding for K through 14 education. That's at 8.1 billion. We preserved the payments to healthcare providers. We pr preserved our childcare uh, reimbursement rates, uh, money for the developmentally disabled and in-home supportive services. Uh, that medical residency money remained in the budget. Special education funding was actually increased by about 645 million. By the way, the medical school money for UCR, uh, 25 million ongoing remains in the budget. So, and we also, by the way, the governor was going to eliminate Cal Grant funding for our private nonprofit colleges and universities, including Cal Baptist and La Sierra and we were able to reverse that cut and preserve. Now, some cuts remain. There's some cuts to UC and CSU that will, will go into effect. And if we receive additional federal funding or if our state revenue increases, those cuts will go away. Uh, there are other cuts um, throughout the budget, but the bottom line is um, we preserved all that we could preserve and we will finish this fiscal year with about $11.3 billion in our reserve account, including $8.35 billion in our rainy day fund. Now, that's a good thing, but it's also a bad thing because this is probably not our first budget this year. We'll probably be called back to do additional budget work depending on the state revenues once income tax returns start uh, to, to hit the state after July 15. Um, and of course, the budget deficits continue, are projected to continue into the next <clears throat> fiscal year, fiscal year 2021-22. Uh, so that's essentially where we are on the budget. Uh, we're now going to turn to bills if we ever get back to Sacramento. 
we have 490 assembly bills pending in the Senate. So as the previous speaker noted, the assemblies had uh, multiple cases of um, COVID-19, at least one, if not two, maybe more members have been infected along with staff. On the Senate side, we've been a little more fortunate, but we have had Senate staffers test positive for COVID-19. Uh, we have not been told on the Senate side when we are returning. We are projected to return on Monday, but I anticipate a caucus call here pretty soon to give me what the current, let me know what the current plan is in terms of our return. Uh, we do not necessarily have to follow the assembly in terms of when we go back, but I guess it's gonna depend on what's going on in Sacramento. On your watch list, you should put that family leave bill that uh, Don mentioned. It did pass the Senate barely with 21 votes and it's over on the assembly side. Now, if the assembly does come back and wants to take that up, it is the number one, as I found out, it's the number one priority of the governor, of the governor's spouse and the governor's chief of staff. That's a pretty dangerous combination in terms of trying to derail a bill like that. So I, I'll take questions um, if you have any. Uh, Linda, do we have any questions for Senator Roth? Yes. Your voting in favor of businesses is appreciated, specific to unemployment. We are continually challenged. Can you offer any help on what a business can do when an employee refuses to come back to work, some because of the extra $600 the feds are giving through July 31st, but also extending unemployment without listening to the business owners. This is a challenge, will be more than a job killer. It's a business well, killer. You know, much, of that is, is, much of that is federal action in terms of the additional money and the expansion of the unemployment benefits. So can you hear me okay? Yes. So I'm not sure there's much the state can do about the total issue. We're looking into right now, uh, the issue having to do with employees re refusing to return to work, um, staying home, and continuing to receive unemployment benefits. So I, I can get back to you on that when I have more concrete information. My understanding was if a job was available, you had to return to work. But what I need to find out is whether there've been some changes. Great. Uh, Linda, any- On the any, federal side um, or the state side. Uh, Someone um, asked- Senator Roth, did you say that the proposed eight Point one billion dollars in cuts for K through 12 has been preserved as of now? No, the, the cuts have been reversed and the 8.1 billion in the budget has been preserved. Education, K through 14 education will largely um, remain funded at the proposed uh, January levels. There are some deferrals, which means we ask school districts to use some of their reserves and we pay them back there's some hardship provisions built in there for districts that can't do that, but K through 14 will do just fine on this under this but under the current budget for now. And Senator, I want to make clear I wasn't talking over you. You we, you were pausing. You were frozen there a little bit, so I got a little confused there. I'm not trying to talk over you at all. No problem. Uh, uh, thank you, uh, Linda. I'm, uh, and do we have another question? No other questions at this time. Okay. John, thank, uh, you for, thank you very much. It's a privilege to represent all of you. Can you believe it's been eight years? No, I can't. It's time has gone so fast. And I got to, again, congratulate you on, on your tenacious representation of uh, our business interests here in Corona and your staff uh, from personal experience, Tyler, Altery, Alti, you have just a quality group of people that uh, help us when we uh, need to contact your office. And uh, I just want to thank you again for, uh, the great job that you do on our behalf. Uh, Linda, did I see another question there for the Senator? Uh, do you know if the extra $600 will be extended beyond July 31st? I don't, I'll answer it. I don't know if the $600, yet. I don't know if it's been extended yet. Uh, that would be at the... So I, he's federal frozen level. up right now, but I believe you're saying that that's on a federal level. Is that correct? Yes, and then I don't know whether uh, that, Bobby, that whether that will be extended or not. Thank you, sir. Great. Thank you. Okay, if that's it, uh, again, Senator, thank you. And uh, I would like to thank all of our speakers that participated here uh, this morning. Uh, this has been another great call. Uh, thanks to those who uh, have participated. And again, thank you all for uh, tuning in today.
Uh, at this time, we have some announcements to make, and I'm going to uh, be joined to present those announcements by next year's chairman of the board, Kim Maybon, who will find out that if she ever has to go to the doctor, Bobby's going to change some of the rules on the, on the call. So, uh, uh, Kim, would you want to take uh, the first slide? Sure. Thank you, Don. Uh, just a reminder for those of you who are not yet a member or if you know of a neighbor business who is, uh, would find the chamber membership beneficial, please connect them with Robert Yanez to be pa become part of our chamber family. We are a regional chamber. It's not just Corona. Thank you. And uh, this Monday, we're going to have our regular, another regular event, which is our Coffee with an Entrepreneur. Uh, our speaker this week is, or this month is going to be uh, Nick Nyakon from Advanced Flow Engineering. Now, these calls are where someone who's an entrepreneur or someone who has a business uh, comes and explains where they're at, how they got to where they're at, where they're going. It's a good insight in uh, businesses and in uh, local businesses and uh, uh to compare notes with uh, what we're all up to today. So uh, I encourage you to uh, uh, get on that uh, Zoom call this Monday morning. Kim? Yeah, we want to thank our sponsor, Lucas Oil Products, for sponsoring today's Zoom call. If you're interested in becoming a sponsor, please contact Bobby at the Chamber. OK. Uh, Safer Together Pledge. I think uh, most of you are aware of taking the pledge uh, to let the travelers know that we're committed to safety during this uh, time of uh, worry and trouble. After you commit to the pledge, you can proudly display the seal uh, that you see here that will signify that you're uh, committed to safety and the standards that have been established for safety. Uh, if you need more information, you want to contact Linda, uh, you can uh, hook into the bitly, bitly link that you see here on this uh, graphic and find out more about it. Kim. Be sure you join us for our next Good Morning Corona membership meeting where Mayor Jim Steiner will give us the business version of the 2020 State of the City. We will also have a special recognition of the 2020 under 40 young professionals to watch. Mark your calendars for Friday, July 17th. Sponsorships are available and the registration link is on the slide. Thank you. Uh, coming up on August 5th, just uh, about a month away, we're going to do our annual golf tournament. And it will be at the Eagle Glen. Uh, this is uh, really a fun day. Uh, we have a limited, limited number of foursomes still available. So if you can get out there and do it, please contact us right away while those are still available. Eagle Glen is a, is a great golf course. It's a, it's a beautiful setting. It's a fun day to bring your friends out there and uh, take a round of golf. Uh, we have some uh, uh, sponsorship opportunities. Uh, and uh, some opportunity tickets to win some prizes. We're going to be supporting and, and honoring some of our frontline heroes by sponsoring them for a day of golf and food and drinks. And uh, again, uh, it's just really a good day uh, that we do every year. So uh, please consider participating, getting involved, buying some tickets, even if you can't make it, and uh, supporting uh, this, this event. Kim. The Women's Leadership Conference will be Thursday, September 4th. Make sure you get your tickets now. We are planning for a great regional event. The Corona Chamber is the host of this event. We have great speakers, including a physician's panel that will share tidbits and critical information for every attendee to receive. This will be a in-person and a hybrid online event. Okay. Once again, I'd like to thank you all for being here today. We're going to do it again next Wednesday, 10 o'clock. Please register now. You can get on right now and register uh, so you can get the Zoom link and everything and be, be ready. So uh, that concludes our call for today, and uh, we'll talk to you next week. Thank you all very much.